So today we're here at uh, Risco, uh, at the edge of the, the ridge here in Zerta Grande. Down there, the house, that's where we're staying. And yesterday we were down there, that's Fajan Grande, where we were searching for the snails and, and found that population. And today we're following along the ridge to, to another area to search for, for another species. In this expedition, we are trying to save four species of snail that are being decimated by invasives. On the first day of fieldwork, the team collected 80 specimens of Geometra gravamai, which are now ready to go to the breeding center. That is great news, it's one out of four snails that is not going to go extinct. So now the focus turns to Discula leliana for the second day and Atlantica calatoids for the third. We need about 20 to 30 of these snails to set up a breeding population at Bristol and Chester zoos. This might not seem like a lot, but the thing is they live here and here. These areas are very hard to reach and also hard to work in, so these next two days will be a challenge. The team hiked up from the house to the top of the island and then followed along the ridge to reach this small patch of fern on a steep slope, which is the last known location for this species. So we're here searching for Discola Liliana and so far we've only found juveniles, they're quite hard to find and they're only known from this patch of, of fern here and um, yeah so we need to get at least 30 adults in order to have enough individuals so that we can take some for the captive breeding program and um, we've been searching for about uh, half an hour, let's see if we find enough. Here you can see the bite marks of uh, domestic rat, uh, domestic mice, the mus musculus. Uh, the mice usually uses the snail as a, not as a food source, but mainly as a water source. Uh, since this is, we are entering in the dry season, in the summer season, they tend to be more voracious against the, the land snails. So we've continued searching, I'm here at the top of the, the crest uh, at the Deserta Grande, you can see Bujiu there in the background, and um, no, no more luck, so we have still those 10 adult individuals which, and, and, the, and more juvenile, juveniles, <clears throat> but uh, it might very well be the case that those are the, the last individuals of the species, so uh, depending on how many we find, we might have to leave them here and uh, it looks like they might very well be going extinct soon, unfortunately. So while I was searching here, um, all over the place, finding no snails, down there they managed to find uh, an, uh, essentially a, a whole group of them. So. I'm gonna go down now and check how the situation is, but uh, sounds like good news. Hopefully we, we reach that number, the 30 individuals that we need to reach uh, in order to take some for the captive breeding program. Fingers crossed. Hey! Hey! Take your scar mark. Don't do it E aqui deve ter mais daqui nesta, nesta parte aqui em cima. <laughs> so that is another species in the bag. In the end, the team found more than 100 specimens and collected 50 of them for the breeding program. The team also installed a data logger to collect temperature and moisture data from the soil and the air. This information will be essential for the teams in Chester and Bristol to get the conditions right for the breeding program. Now on the third day it was time to go look for Atlantica calatoids. Today we are headed in that direction over there uh, where we'll be searching for uh, another species and I'll tell you a bit more about it when, when we get there and uh, hopefully we'll be 
as lucky today as we were yesterday. You can see a small little boomerang shaped island over there that's called Bujiu. And in that area, they have eradicated the invasive rat and um, that has meant that the vegetation and the snail species have actually boomed and, and recovered. Bujiu Island is an exciting prospect for our snails. The fossil record there shows our four snails used to inhabit the island before going locally extinct due to the invasives. However, recent conservation efforts now mean the island is a safe haven for endemic species. So a potential future path for our snails is to be translocated to that island to repopulate it. But that is all for later. First, we have to actually find them and then breed them successfully in captivity. Uh, this is a very steep descent. We, we know the population, it's only a tiny area, more or less 20 square meters. Uh, it's, it's probably below 60 to 80 meters from this area where we are standing on. So we've been searching for Atlantica calatoids here for about um, for about uh, three hours and all we got was two juveniles that are still alive and all the rest were dead shells. So it seems like um, yeah, this population is really on the brink here and that means that there's not enough individuals for us to take with, with us for the captive breeding program. And when I was landing the drone, I managed to do something quite stupid. And, uh, and as, I, as I was flipping it around, I cut myself with the drone. So far, it has been very disappointing, but it was nothing that we are not expected. was not expected because this is a very dry area. Uh, but well, we will extend our survey to n the nearest areas, but without probably many hope of finding a live specimen. But we will try. And yeah, that's the update. So all, our journey all the way here seems like today uh, was fruitless. But, uh, but yeah, we we were getting uh, crucial information about about the last remaining populations of this species. And that's always important if we are to, um, to try and, and conserve it and, and prevent its extinction.